this update was actually fire. I think Infinity Ward really found their pot of gold at the end of this rainbow. However, I am Atsuki, and in this video, I wanted to tackle the sort of stigma around MW2 being the worst COD ever. I want to sell you guys into playing MW2 again. And lastly, a lot of people are ragging on the new map, Himmelmat Expo, and I don't think the ground they stand on is very sturdy. So like, look, yes, I've made quite a few videos dunking on MW2's post-launch support, but this mid-season update is actually something I'm genuinely happy playing. So many complaints are fixed, and multiplayer finally got its first, brand new 6v6 map since the game came out. Don't get me wrong, I really liked Museum at the start of Season 2, but that wasn't a new map. That was already a complete map since the beta. Plus, Museum only existed in a 24-7 playlist for maybe a week into Season 2, before it was inevitably replaced by the infamous duo, Season 1's shipment in Shoothouse 24-7. Yay. And don't get me wrong here either, I'm not defending Infinity Ward's poor decision-making in the past. Infinity Ward should have been honest about Himmelmet Expo being pushed up to Season 2 because of the not-so-happy player base. Not solely because, oh, it's a Season 3 map that was playing well, so we're releasing it early. Honestly, if that's the case, I'm getting a little bit worried about Season 3's quantity of original maps. Are we only gonna get one brand new map for Season 3 or what? What is their plan for Season 3? Guess we'll have to wait to find out. Not to mention, the reason I'm further concerned is because if things were going smoothly with Museum releasing at launch, like it was supposed to, that would make the Observatory Dome the only map planned for Season 2. One map planned for Season 2, and it's also a recycled map. Frankly, I don't think things are lining up very well. But here we are, Season 2 Reloaded. Was the wait worth it? Not really. But was the Reloaded update good? In my opinion, it was actually fucking fantastic. I would have honestly scrapped Season 1 and 2 in favor of starting MW2 off with the Reloaded content drop. That's how shit MW2 was before this Reloaded update. The first raid sucked, the Christmas event lacked so many features that made Christmas exciting in past CODs. I highly recommend checking out my MW2 versus Fortnite Christmas event video for more on that. And obviously, we didn't want yet another shipment, we didn't want shootouts, and we didn't want MW3's dome in the MW2. MW2 reboot. Why the most iconic MW3 map in MW2? I, I don't get it. But in spite of the lackluster previous seasons, this is probably the first update where I think MW2's gone in the right direction. I've been asking for so long at this point for a wider wingspan compass, a classic COD event, the ability to play raids without strictly three players, a raids matchmaking system, inverted flashbangs, a snowy map. <laughs> I miss my snowy maps in COD. Also, just for channel sake, join Snowy Fam on MW2 groups if you want to play with me. Every Saturday we do an open lobby snowy stream. I'll catch you there, but man, talk about defying expectations. Season 1 did not have a reloaded update, and it didn't seem like Season 2 was going to either, but Infinity Ward did surprise us. Everything I just mentioned was in the update. The compass actually got a buff. We can now see a full 180 degree angle instead of a cramped 45 degree angle. The only thing I want now is the red dots on the compass to increase in size. They're extremely hard to see in near peripheral vision. This wasn't a problem in MW19 and Vanguard, so what I suggest Infinity or do is add a dot size option in the interface settings, similar to the center dot size option that's already in the game. Let players shrink dots to a point they can't be seen, or let us blow them up to a point they're enormous. Give us that customization and I won't complain about a normal minimap in MW2 ever again. <laughs> a working compass is all I need to maintain good map flow. Earlier this year, I said that MW2 needs to pick a side, buff the compass, or the minimap, and it seems like they've chosen the compass. However, I would also recommend the compass in MW2 to show us suppress gunfire. I think that would help the general flow while also giving players enough room to still play stealthily. I actually noticed this compass change while playing the new raid, so I immediately ran over to MP to see if it had changed there too, and in fact it did. Big thank you for listening to our feedback. Raids also got a huge update that's fundamentally a game changer. We can now matchmake to find lobbies instead of only going in with two other people that are only from our friends list. In addition, matches no longer end if someone accidentally times out. Hoorah! And that's not even the best part. The first raid sucked. Recently, my friend Timmy and I went in with a random, and that random timed out around two-thirds of the way through. But we persevered up to the final mission where we needed to enter those numbers into the terminal. This was a hard objective with three people, so you guys can imagine how hard it was with only two of us. But I will say, it is possible. Unfortunately, while trying to get Timmy Panda his first raid completion, my game kicked me offline, right when I entered the last code in. Coincidence? I think not. I was pretty pissed. But hey, this season two update makes up 
for that shit stain. While the season one raid was more about enemy combat and playing underwater, season two's raid was heavily focused on parkour and escape rooms. This time around, combat came second. Did I mention the raids also got eight new rewards? <laughs> Dude, this fun second raid gave me one of the best looking camos in the game. Look how saturated this green is and the dark black backdrop. Oh, this reminds me of the Monster Can energy drinks, and it maintains that shiny metallic look to it. it. It's so pretty. Also, the second raid contains a fun little classified Easter egg that mainly requires good coordination and teamwork. You gotta speed run the first section to kill this one operator that drops you the first key card. Your next key card is located on the far back operator looking over the first parkour section. And then the last operator you gotta kill and collect the key card from is a guy running away on the far balcony after you zip line up to the second floor in the parkour section. Every person needs to carry their own separate keycard, and no one can die until they put their cards into a door just located after the third and final parkour section. If someone falls to their death, game over. You gotta restart. Being as big brain as I was, once we reach the final parkour section, we devised a plan. Since this final parkour route is a bit risky with three players, we decided to send one person down at a time. Once that person got across and put their keycard into the door, they would just drop back down and do it again with the next card. I highly recommend if you have someone in your group that's just really good at parkour, let them go each time. Just drop your key card down for them so that they can do the run for you. Again, everyone can only carry one card at a time, so make sure you enter that card into the door before you hop down again. <laughs> Once you get all three key cards to the door, get everyone over, go through the door, down the hallway, and find yourself a dope royalty camo looking blueprint for the cast of 74U. <laughs> oh, she is a beaut. But yeah, I love the second raid. I love that the parkour is fun. I love the escape room with the gas and how everyone needs to work together to open doors and turn off the fans as someone runs through the obstacle course as time runs out. This veteran mode also has an exclusive Bison variant that kind of looks like the CDL camo if I'm being honest. But also, veteran changes up the map in fun little ways, so that you guys find it for yourselves as to not ruin the surprises and the modifiers that await you and your squad. Bon appetit, have some fun guys. Next up, the flashbangs. They finally added the option to invert the colors of the blinding white to a soothing blackout. You never really realize how much of a difference it makes until you enable this option. Your eyes will immediately thank you for this on long gaming sessions. This game grants everyone free tacticals, and flashbangs are some of the most popular equipment out there. Trust me, enable this option for a couple days and you'll get used to it. Thank god it's here now. Speaking of things now here, say hello to the newest classic COD event. The second batch of Path of the Ronin challenges are now here for the reloaded update, and they actually reward the player with two brand new beautiful camos. It's a huge step up from Vanguard's shitty event weapon blueprint rewards last year. Fluff those ugly ass variants, they were extremely uncustomizable. Camos work on every gun, regardless of attachments used. I'm glad MW2 returned to the DLC camos instead of strictly relying on new weapon variants like the past three gods did. I mean, MW2 started off introducing weapon vaults that fixed the previous weapon variant system somewhat, but where are they at now? I mean, I don't really care because camos will always be infinitely better, but I digress. The unique thing about these challenges is that by completing one sector, you unlock the first camo for that weapon type. I got 40 kills with the launchers, so now I have the Winds of Ash camo on all of my launchers. Do the challenge for every single weapon type, and you get the Blue Sky Cherry Blossom camo for all guns upon mastery completion. It's so engaging and fun, especially with how friendly Himmelmet Expo is for all weapon types. Thus, I want to finish this video off with my opinion around the new map Himmelmet Expo, as it's been a bit more controversial. I do plan on making a video dedicated to why I love this map, but for now, without spoiling too much, let's talk about what I love and the biggest complaints the map gets. In Domination, apparently the A and B flags are too close together on the overhead map view, while C's flag is too far away. This apparently means that it's easy to capture A and B and then defend them since they're so close in proximity, but I think that's rather far from the truth. This map's designed so well that most of the time, people with the C flag will also capture B soon after. Simply put, this map is built in a way that allows people from C's flag side to push B with better high ground power positions and cover. This whole second floor hallway overlooks the B flag, and all the opposite side's entrances leading into the conference room. People from the other side do not have much cover other than the elevated head glitch in the center of the room, plus the little flimsy plywood walls around the B flag. If the enemies want to flank me on the balcony using this back long staircase, they have to expose themselves so much that I'm probably going to kill them before they make it there. And even if they do make it to the staircase, they still have no cover going up the stairs, while well, I can just easily strafe around the corner and catch them off guard in a tax sprint. Not to mention, my team can 
can use the staircase to easily gain way more ground. Cover in the conference room is also built for moving towards the A flag. Look at this head glitch. So many things, including the spawns in the sculpture garden, allow the C flag players to get the upper hand on B's flag. The whole map in Dom almost feels like a constant cycling wheel. We're always on our way to capture C, then B, then A, then C, then B, then A, and so on. The last complaint I want to cover in this video is around the multi entrances to and from the backstage into the main lobby. Why have an elevator shaft and a staircase leading to the exact same area? Well, let me tell you, it's to do with the map's flow that I've already discussed. People going from B to A can either take the short and risky way up to the lobby using the elevator shaft that they have to mantle up on, which leaves you very exposed, or you can take a very slightly longer way up that gives you a perfect safe head glitch. The choice is there for you to determine what is right in the specific moment. Now, I'd, I'd like to give some props to Infinity Board for the size of this map alongside the art direction as well. This is just a beautiful map from top to bottom. I love the aesthetic, the snow, the blue lights and windows at the bar, the fire outside, the outdoor swimming pool, and so much more looks so vibrant and pleasing to the eye. Well done, art team. And lastly, I'd like to reiterate that this map supports all play styles. Run and gun, sniping from a distance, camping with shotguns, holding high ground with LMGs. This map got it all. There's so much variety. It's an easy S tier map, what can I say? And that's all there is for multiplayer, and yeah, I know DMZ and Warzone 2 aren't part of MW2 necessarily, they're the free to play modes, but since DMZ now has the crown faction locked for MW2 users that bought the $70 game, I may as well talk about the little addition DMZ's map got for the St. Paddy's Day event too. Unfortunately, this event was extremely short. I went to go play it nearly three days after St. Paddy's Day, and it was gone. Yeah. However, when it did exist, the water turned green, full of algae, and a rainbow stretched across the Elmazra sky. It's a really immersive addition that really gets you into the St. Paddy's Day spirit. I wish it stayed longer or added something permanent like a, a rainbow in some random matches, but happy pot of gold hunting to y'all laddies. I hope y'all enjoyed this video enough to smash that like button in the face, like a boss, high fives all around, <laughs> And I'll see all you homies in the next video. I know you will. I hope Jack Septicai approves of the use of this outro.